Hello, hello, what's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, which I'm hoping this video gets out there, so I'm hoping that a lot of you watching this are new, welcome to my channel. Typically, my content is mostly related to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and that is what brings me to this video and this journey that I'm currently on because as I was training one night in class, I tore all of my hamstring tendons. So this video is for all of my fellow proximal hamstring avulsion besties out there. This video is for everybody who has recently sustained this injury. Welcome to a really tough period in your life. <laughs> I've been documenting my journey from the injury to the surgery to all of my recovery after the surgery and now making this video in particular because you're going to quickly find that there is not a lot of information out there. There's just minimal information about the injury, the surgery, if you go the conservative route, and there is literally nothing out there that talks about what the recovery process is going to be like and what you are really going to go through. To be honest, the most that you're probably going to find at first when you first get injured and you start doing all of the research about what happened to your body, the most you're gonna find is articles from the NIH, articles from the British Journal of Sports Medicine, and that's really about it. I tried to read up on a ton when I first got injured, so all of those scientific articles are fine and dandy, and they give you sort of a general idea of what happened to your body. But I think nowadays, people are much more interested in connecting with other people, connecting with somebody else who has gone through what you are going through or is going through it at the same time. At least that's how I was. So so when I went on YouTube and there was nothing out there of anybody talking about this injury, there was one video of a guy that posted, I think it was like seven years ago, he made one video of his surgery day and then he never posted again. And that was the only thing that I could find. Aside from YouTube, there is a Facebook group that I'm going to link in the description below because that group has been really helpful. I tell everybody it's my hamstring support group and everybody kind of laughs and I do too, but this injury is is so tough and it's so unusual and it's an injury that most people will just never go through. It's an injury that most people, including myself, didn't even know could happen. So having a community on Facebook was really helpful when I was trying to find out as much information on the recovery process as I could. And now I'm hoping that this will also be a source for that kind of information as well. So let's start from the beginning. An injury, like I said, that you probably never even knew could be possible. Possible. You're probably doing a ton of research. You have probably no idea what to do or what next step to take, but you want the best care. And most importantly, you want to get back to the life that you lived before you got injured. You are either going to have surgery or you're not. And it depends on a couple of different factors. Before I go any further, let me also say this. I am not a doctor. I am by no means any kind of medical professional. Everything I say in this video is from my own experience, from my own research, and from my own experience talking with my surgeon. Just had to throw that out there. So once you get your MRI and you get your results and you find out that you tore your hamstring tendons. Who the heck knew that you could do that, right? You'll soon find out that there's different levels to this. The severity of your injury depends on a couple of different things. One, how many tendons did you tear? When I got the results back from my MRI, I was hoping and hoping and praying and praying that my hamstring was not completely torn. I was expecting the muscle itself to be torn and just praying that it wasn't completely torn. And then when I looked at the paper and I saw that there were three different tendons fully torn, I was like, okay. And everything that I was praying for, the research that I had done so far was kind of thrown out the window because the game just changed and it got a lot more severe. So how many tendons did you tear? Are they completely torn? And how many centimeters are those tendons retracted? Actually, let me add one more thing. So a fourth sort of factor on the severity of your injury is, is there a fracture from your pelvic bone? Did the tendons, if they are completely torn, evenly and cleanly tear away from the bone or did the tendons pull little fragments of the bone 
away from itself. Obviously that brings the injury to a whole new level. When you start Googling and researching what to do next, you completely torn your hamstring tendons. Everything on the internet is gonna point to surgery. And I'll be honest, at first I tried to deny it. I did not want surgery. I was willing to, if there was the slightest chance that my body could heal by itself, which it can, but for my particular lifestyle, if my body could properly heal, I was willing to take that chance in order to avoid surgery. That was my mindset in the beginning. When you do go see a surgeon, there's a couple of things that they are going to take into consideration. Going back to those few factors that we just talked about, how many tendons are involved? From what I read, from what I talked about with my surgeon, again, I'm not a medical professional. Usually, if it's more than two tendons, two or more tendons, they're gonna recommend surgery. If those tendons are also completely torn, they're gonna recommend surgery. Of course, every surgeon is different, but from what mine told me typically if the retraction so how far away did the tendons tear away from the pelvis if it's two centimeters or more they're probably going to recommend surgery mine retracted three centimeters away from the bone and really from there and further, it's gonna be really hard for the tendons to sort of make their way back to the bone. There is also the possibility that the longer that you wait for surgery, or if you don't have surgery at all, there is the possibility that the tendons could retract even further away. And then now sort of the lifestyle factors. How old are you? A little fun fact that I found out when I spoke to the first surgeon who I did not like, he very bluntly said, if you're young, you're athletic, if you're activity level is high, you're a good candidate for surgery. And so once he said that, I was like, okay, so what do you do for someone who's injured and in pain and maybe they're older and maybe they're not quite as active? And he, again, very bluntly said, we just let them heal. And when I found that out, it kind of made me sad because I feel like, I don't know, don't people that are older and maybe aren't athletes or are more sedentary, don't they deserve a chance to heal properly too? But now going through it, and I still kind of think that, but now going through the surgery, I can kind of understand maybe why an individual who is a bit older like that and doesn't want to get to a life of being very active, the surgery is really rough and the recovery is really rough. So I can understand maybe why they don't want to put someone of that age and of that activity level through the surgery recovery. Age and activity level. According to surgeons, according to everything you read online, if you are younger, if you are an athlete, if you play any kind of sport, if you are just a very active individual, if you are just just overall in good health, you are a good candidate for the surgery. If you have a strong desire to get back to the lifestyle that you lived pre-injury, if you wanna get back to your sport like I do, if you have young kids, maybe even if you have grandkids and you wanna get back to being active with them, the surgeon is gonna have you think about getting surgery. The thing with this injury and what kind of makes it a bit complicated is there's not a ton of studies out there on going the conservative route. And even more specifically, going the conservative route and returning to sport. There are some articles out there from the British Journal of Sports Medicine, but there's just, it's really just not enough. And there's just not a ton of details for me, that convinced me that going the conservative route and to return to a sport like jujitsu, I wasn't convinced. Maybe one day there will be. Maybe one day there will be more studies of people not getting surgery and returning to sport. Who knows? But right now, there's not a ton of information out there. So, obviously, I went with the surgery. I was terrified. I had an incredible amount of anxiety. I wanted to avoid surgery at all costs, if possible. I'm very health conscious and to to me, getting surgery was like doctors were going to invade my body. That's just how I was looking at it. I was terrified of the anesthesia. I was terrified of going under. I was so scared of what it was gonna feel like coming out of anesthesia. I was scared of being in a ton of pain. You always hear so many stories about how when you come out of surgery, you're just in incredible amounts of pain and researching this injury. And according to most people, you're in a lot of pain afterwards. And I was so scared of that and not even just the pain, but I was terrified of possibly having to take painkillers. When I got injured, obviously my life was altered, right? And the first week after the injury was really, really difficult. But after the first week, 
my body kind of started to heal. I started getting a little bit more mobile, living became easier, and I really started to question if surgery was even necessary. And once day-to-day -day things became a little bit easier after getting injured, I also started having the thoughts of, I don't really want to get surgery and take 10 steps backwards. After week one of getting injured, I felt like I was moving in the right direction. My body was healing. I was feeling a little bit better. I was moving better. And then now getting surgery, I was going to start from square one. And to be quite honest, I think once you get surgery, you're not starting from square one. I think you're starting from square freaking negative 100. So now let's get into the initial recovery post-surgery because let me tell you, doctors do not tell you anything. I think I might cut this video here actually because I don't want it to get too long and the start of your recovery is a long road and there's a lot of detail to it. And I think I really wanna devote a whole episode to just talking about that initial recovery post-surgery. I will end with this. The surgery is the easiest part. Even if you're scared, if you are as scared as I was, I never had surgery before. The surgery is the easiest thing that you will go through in this whole process. It's a really big relief when it's over. You're going to probably feel like I did. I felt like I had the weight of the world off of my shoulders. I probably still had a little bit of a high from the anesthesia, but I did have this just amazing high of getting the surgery done and knowing that I was on the other side of it and my body was put back into place and I was now officially on the road to recovery. It's a really, really wonderful, amazing feeling, but I'm going to say the hardest weeks are ahead and I really want to dive into that in the next episode. So if you stuck with me throughout this whole video, I really, really appreciate it. If you're going through this, if you just got injured, if you already had the surgery, leave a comment. Let me know. I would love to hear your recovery experience so far. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and ask them. I always link my Instagram below if you want to privately message me and chat about anything. Just for reference, I am just about to hit the 12 week post-op mark this coming Monday. I'm really excited. Once I hit the six week mark and I got off crutches and I got out of the brace, my next big goal was getting to this 12 week mark because so they say that's when the tendons have kind of officially attached themselves to the bone and they're not only held together to the bone from the sutures. So the 12 week mark is kind of that mark that you really wanna hit and I'm about to be there and I'm really excited and I wanna share as much as I can with you guys out there that are going through the same thing because it's really helpful hearing from and just knowing that there's other people out there going through the same thing as you because it's really tough. So stay tuned for the next video. I do have other videos that I will link below if you are interested in what the recovery journey has been like so far. Other than that, until the next video, I will see you guys next time.